are 106,000 peacekeepers in 15 different peacekeeping missions worldwide. That makes UN peacekeepers the largest military presence in conflict zones globally. The permanent five members of the Security Council are the UK, the US, Russia, China, and France. Again and again, these five countries have agreed to authorize and reauthorize missions. That tells us that agreement between these countries is possible, even though they're very unlike-minded. When we see big shifts in US politics, that leaves peacekeeping vulnerable. We tend to think of peacekeeping as not working very well because the failures are big, but the actual failure rate is like one in four missions. And how we understand one in four missions is variable. You know, if one in four commercial flights crashed, we would end commercial aviation, right? Like that would be it. But if you've got a drug for cancer and three out of four patients survive and the fourth does not, then you say that that's not a bad success rate. Peacekeepers are not good war fighters. So when peacekeepers intervene in conflict, then we don't see a real effect, right? When there's a war going on still and we send peacekeepers, it's basically the same as not sending peacekeepers at all. Peacekeeping missions have to be authorized by the UN Security Council. We really should be attentive to what kinds of agreements the Security Council is, is striking and what kinds of peacekeeping policies and interventions that enables, because that shapes the nature of contemporary peace and security.